Hello guys and welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna show you how to improve and customize plastic safety eyes. Safety eyes are really popular, mostly because you can find them in any craft stores, online or at your local store. They are available in different colors, different sizes and even different pupil shapes. Currently, the most popular eyes are sparkly eyes with a glitter background. Safety eyes aren't perfect and can be really tricky to use. You need to choose the position of the eyes before you stuff your toy. Because you need to secure the eyes from the back of the fabric with a metal or plastic washer. Standard plastic eyes look boring, so let's turn them into amazing looking eyes. I'm going to use simple techniques with tools and materials you most likely can find at home, so you can see how it can be done, and then use your favorite techniques to make your very own unique customized eye. So let's get started! If the eyes are pre-painted, remove the paint by using solvent with a cloth or sponge and rubbing the paint away until it's off. Use larger to smaller grid files to remove factory flash along the edge of the safety eye. Then buff the surfaces so they don't snag any fibers. Your safety eyes need a hole on the tail to attach them to your toy. If your plastic safety eyes don't already have a hole, you can make one. To make a hole in the safety eye tail, start by making a guide hole that you will expand. Use a thin needle heated by fire to make a guide hole by pushing the heated needle through the safety eye tail. Expand the hole using a drill bit with a larger gauge than your guide hole. If you don't have a drill, you can expand the hole in the tail using only the heated needle. After expanding the hole, remove the excess melted plastic using a small grid file. Now we're ready to move on. When normally painting a picture, you begin with a background layer and then add other details on the top. When painting an iris, the layer order is reversed. The detail layers are painted first and the background layer go last. In my example, I use a fine brush to paint dark blue radial lines from the center to the edge of the eye. Then I let it dry before the next step. My second layer had similar radial lines as the first layer, but this time using a chameleon effect paint. Then I let it dry. I use a needle to carefully scrape and remove extra paint, while at the same time correcting my mistakes. When you are happy with your work, add the background layer with a regular brush and, just like after the other steps, let it dry. The method I used with acrylic paint also applies to nail polish. Front layers go first and background layers go last. Any materials, tools or technique used for nail art will be useful to making an iris for your safety eye. In my example, I use a nail polish with sparkling metallic looking flakes for my first two layers. After drying the first layer, 
I apply the second layer of the same nail polish. For the background layer, I use a holographic nail polish. To embroider your safety eye iris, you will need an iris template. If your safety eye kit comes with a separate iris background, you can use it as a template. If your kit doesn't come with a background, you can make one by placing your safety eye through a circle template to find the circle size you need to trace. The stability and thickness of your fabric tells you if you should cut your trace before or after embroidering. I used felt and cut it out before embroidering because it is a stable fabric. I cut out a hole in the center of the iris with a hole punch, so the tail will fit through the fabric. If your fabric, for example plain woven fabric, is not stable, consider embroidering before cutting your trace and using a fray stabilizer on it. In my example I use metallic embroidery floss. I separated embroidery threads from floss, then combined two threads to embroider. But after seeing the result, I chose to use one thread so I could have more lines for more details on the iris. I made powder from dark colored chalk pastel and use a soft brush to apply it on the outer edge of the iris. Then use the rough bristle brush to blend. Any brush with rough and small bristles is good for this kind of blending. You can use your old toothbrush. I think a paper iris has the most amount of variety for an iris. You can use photo of the iris from the internet or any picture can be an iris, it's all about your imagination. Take a photo from the nature like a pond, lava, galaxy, petri dish contents, lightning, insect eye, or even paint your own creation. Keep hunting for interesting art for a future iris. In my example, I printed the iris using thick matte photo paper. Use a hole punch for the pupil hole, so that your iris will fit through the tail of the eye. The safety eye iris pupil and the hole of the tail of the eye doesn't need to be perfect circle, because the safety eye already have a pupil on it. Hole just need to be big enough to fit the tail. An iris can be smaller or equal to the size of the safety eye, but not bigger. When moving a safety eye with a smaller iris, details can disappear looking from certain angles. A smaller iris diameter gives your safety eye this kind of aura effect that changes with the size difference. If you don't like this kind of effect, try to get a perfectly matching iris diameter or paint the edge of the eye itself to lose this aura effect. Measure your safety eye through a circle template. To find the diameter you need for printing, painting or cutting. The paper iris stay in place between the back of the safety eye and the fabric. But if you want to use a glue, be sure use a 3D effect varnish instead. You can mix your artistic talents from other craft disciplines to create your highest level of professional expression and imagination in the form of iris decoration. Have fun!
and I can't wait to see you in next video. Bye!